Hello, my name is Leanne Hadley, and I'm so glad to welcome you to Pieta this morning or today, whenever you're watching this. Um, Pieta is a spiritual movement of love and compassion for ourselves, for others, for the earth, and for all God's creatures. And our um, image is this beautiful Pieta of Mary loving her son. And this space in between, the space of absolute compassion and love, is what Pieta is all about. We're a Christian movement, um, but if you are about love, compassion, you are welcome here. We have a very large table and you are welcome at it. So welcome to Pieta. We're continuing our series today on the feminine images of God that are found in the Bible. I just want to review um, what some of those are. Uh, God as uh, Elohim, which was a plural, and Ruah, which so Elohim is masculine and Ruah is feminine. So God as this mixture of male and female was week one. Week two was one um, God who comforts like a mother. Uh, week three was God who is like a mother eagle. Uh, last week was the one who will not forget us like a mother would not forget her baby. And today we're going to look at God as a midwife. And I think um, to me this was one of the most um, interesting images of God. So God as a midwife. So before we start our lesson, I just want to take a moment and be still, light our candle and say our Pieta prayer. And then we'll enter our work for tonight or today, whenever you're watching this. There we go. We cut our candle lit. Let's just be still for a moment. Let me be in the world with nothing to prove, letting go of all expectation and judgment. May I give and receive compassion. May I care for others and receive their care. May I love deeply and receive love. May I be in the world with nothing to prove. May I be Pieta. Welcome to Pieta. All right, so um, today our scripture is from Psalm 22, verse 10. Yet, God, you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. So this is a person saying, when my mother birthed me, God, you were the midwife. You pulled, you caught me. You pulled me from my mother. You coached my mother through this process. You placed me on your, my mother's breast. It's like God is right there making sure that everything starts well for this little baby. And that is the role of the midwife. Back in ancient times, there were midwives and um, they were considered medical professionals. It was one of the one thing that women could do um, that was respected and was an actual job. And what they did is they journeyed with women, much like midwives or obstetricians do today, making sure that they ate well and had the best care. And then at the time of birth, they were with them and they did all in their power to birth them. In fact, there are um, obstetricians um, obstetrical handbooks um, that were in the ancient Near Middle East um, that are as old as uh, the Older Testament. So they started, as soon as things were written down, they started writing down these books. And so before that, probably when Psalm was written, they were doing things by memory. They would, one midwife would teach another, would teach another. But by the time writing started and books began, they had a lot to write about. And it's actually um, you know, it's old information, but it was current for the time of the midwives. Um, so um, the midwives are very popular in the Bible. They're mentioned many times, and they're always good. So I just want to tell you three of the stories that midwives are in. So Rachel is a matriarch of the church. She gives birth um, to her second son, Benjamin, and she is there with a midwife um, because things are not going well for her. But we, we, don't, we don't know that... Um, the midwife is there just because things are going bad. Um, we know that the midwife probably would have been there with all of the births of all of her babies because that's how it happened. So a midwife is there. And um, they're actually called Amelia Det. And anyway, that word uh, means one who causes or helps birth. So they were there to help the birth process. 
Um, the presence of the midwife in the birth of Tamar's twins. Um, this is really fun because Tara, Tamar is uh, one of the great, great grandmothers of King David. So when the babies are being born and they're twins, the one starts to come out, the midwife is there. She ties a scarlet um, ribbon, a little, a little uh, thread on his arm. And then when his brother pulls him back in and goes out first, she is the one who has proof that actually the one that came out second was coming out first and was wrestled back into the womb. And she was listened to. So it's a really respectful time. We know that midwives were respected at the time um, of in the ancient world. And then um, two midwives, Shipra and Pua, they're probably the most well-known midwives, and they are the ones who claim that Hebrew women are so strong that they can't possibly um, get there and kill their babies before they're born because they have been um, commanded by Pharaoh to kill babies at the time of their birth. And they say, oh no, we don't even get there in time for the birth, and if we do, the baby's already out. And so they lie um, in the face of power to do what is right. So they're very famous midwives. So anyway, um, this was a profession to be a midwife. Um, they would train their successors. They had um, informal associations where they would get together and teach each other. They would give medications to women, even though it wasn't anything like we have today. And they would have certain prayers that they would utter at childbirth. So um, the other jobs that women could have that were female professions, and I mean it was limited, were some wise women. So we have like Deborah, who was one of the prophets. And then we have musicians. They could sing and dance, and they could be professional mourners. But the midwife seems to be the most professional status, something that was in the medical community. And it's interesting that midwifery was very popular and not questioned until the birth of modern medicine when it became male dominated. So um, it was modern medicine that kind of did away with this profession for women and turned it into a profession for men. Women are making great strides in making that up and I'm glad to see that um, because I think that in the ancient days, women were the first doctors. So I think that's exciting. Okay, so here's my ponderings about this topic. First of all, it's an interesting image that God is a midwife because it's professional. In most of the other images of God as a woman um, or a female image of God, it's like a woman giving birth, a bird that intuitively takes care of its babies. But in this case, um, this is God acting as a professional, like God has chosen to be there at the birth and has chosen sort of to take on this persona of a woman. So um, I think it's such, um, it's a different image because it is professional. So when we read these things and we're like, well, you know how God is, you know, you, you're going to get pregnant someday and you're going to have a baby if you're a woman. Well, that leaves out all the men. And also, um, for women that can't have children or have chosen not to have children, you know, sometimes it can feel like, oh, I, I don't know, it can be hard to wrestle with these female images because they have so much to do with giving birth. But in this case, this is a person who journeys alongside someone else who's giving birth. And so I think that's a neat image um, when we look at ourselves reflected in the face of God. Um, Midwives are always good in the Bible. So again, we're in a time in a patriarchal age where women were thought of as lesser. In this case, women are um, revered and they are depended on and they are respected. And so I think it's neat to find those places in the Bible where women are respected. And then the third um, is just this idea. I'm, I'm intrigued with this idea that God is there when we are born and then companions us through our lives. But if you take that a little bit broader, you know, we're birthing things all the time. We're birthing new ideas, we're birthing new jobs, we're birthing, um, as we discover, how do we move from this phase of life into that phase of life? These are all changeable birth experiences. And so um, I love this image of God as a midwife. And I just wanna remind you that birthing is hard work, not only for the mother, but for the baby. You know, before the baby is born, it has never used its lungs. And so something miraculous has to happen. The baby has to get out of the womb and figure out how to breathe. Um, the baby has to have its first bowel movement. We don't want the baby to have it in the womb. We want the baby to have it after the baby comes out. Again, the baby has to learn to expel stuff from its bowels. And then the baby's heart, completely changes 
Um, I thought this was so interesting. It says that, um, let's see, uh, uh, when the baby comes out, the right side of the heart is the dominant side, and then um, that part shuts down, these temporary shunts shut down, um, and the, the heart actually changes so that the right side begins to do most of the work. It's just, the baby changes in, in birth. So from the time that it's in the womb and it goes through the birth canal, the baby has to do all these new things. Birthing is hard. It's hard for the mother. It's hard for the baby. It's hard for the person who's supporting the birth of the baby. And I want us today to think about all those times in our lives that we're giving birth. I mean, where are you right now? What are you birthing? Um, are you birthing a new job? Are you trying to birth retirement? Um, are you birthing, trying to be a compassionate person after this election? Like, what are you birthing right now? And where do you see God in the midst of that? Or is someone that you love birthing something? They've got an idea. They're trying to do something important. How are you coming along like a midwife to help them? And where is God in that? So I want us just to ponder God as a midwife this week. I think it is fascinating. And I think for me personally, it's one of my favorite images of God as a midwife, that one who companions us as we move from one stage to another, as we go from being content through trauma, birthing something new. It's fascinating. All right, spend some time pondering that um, this week. So I want to just say our Pieta prayer, and then we'll be done for today. Thank you for being with me. I, I hope you've enjoyed learning about God as a midwife as much as I have learned sharing it with you, as much as I've enjoyed it. Um, okay, let's pray. Let us be in the world with nothing to prove, letting go of all expectations and judgment. May we give and receive compassion. May we care for others and receive their care. May we love deeply and receive love. May we be in the world with nothing to prove. May we be Pieta. I wonder what God is birthing in your life, and I wonder where God is in that. It's exciting. All right, take care. I'll see you next time.